Hey everyone, this is Saito, and in today's video, I'm going to walk you through X64 Chin Engine 7.5 tutorials. Let's get into it. So to access the tutorials, you're going to want to come here, help, and Chin Engine tutorial x86-64. Once this window is open, you can come here and attach to it using this icon right here, and you can click on tutorial x86-64. Once that's done, you can click next, and now we're on the first step. So Chin Engine allows you to look for values within the program's memory. On this step, you're supposed to find this health value, which is 100, and change it to 1000. So what you want to do is you want to come here and type the value here. And you want to make sure that this is on exact value and this is on 4 bytes. The reason we're putting it on 4 bytes is because an integer in x64 is 4 bytes. Click for a scan and we get a bunch of results. We want to now filter these results to narrow down our search, right? So we can click hit me, 96, look for 96. Click next and we get only one result. Double click this to add this to the other table. And now we can change this to a thousand. Once that's done, you can see that this next button that was previously grayed out is now clickable. So sometimes when you want to look for values, you don't necessarily have an initial value. All you're presented with is a progress bar or a health bar or anything that doesn't display to you its initial value, right? So think the health of an enemy in a shooter game, right? So how can we do that? Well, Chin Engine allows us to look for an unknown initial value. All you have to do is you have to come here, new scan, unknown initial value and click first scan. And then using hit me, we can actually narrow down these results. So it went down by nine. You can come here and select decrease value by and then put in nine, not negative nine, nine. Next scan, click hit me again, negative eight. So eight, next scan. And it tells us that this value is within zero and 500 and it wants us to change it to 5,000, right? So it's probably this one. So I'm gonna take this and change this to 5,000. And you can see that this button is now not grayed out anymore. Click next. Now in this step, you're supposed to find two floating point numbers. A floating point number is just a number with a decimal point. So think 3.1 or 5.1 or 1132.1. And finding these for us is very similar to finding a normal integer. All you have to do is you have to come here, click new scan, click first scan and select float, right? For this one, because it tells you that it's a float. Search for hundred, first scan, hit me 98.1, double click that and it tells us to change them both to 5,000, right? So now let's look for ammo, 100. Make sure this is on double, first scan, add it here, change this to 5,000, change the other one to 5,002. And now we can move on to the next step. So in this step, we are supposed to find the assembly instruction that is responsible for changing this value. It's super simple and I'm gonna walk you through how it works. So the next step should always be looking for this value, right? So you wanna come here, click new scan, make sure this is on four bytes, meaning integer, click for a scan, click change value, 419, next scan, and get one value, add it to the table. And now what you wanna do is that you wanna right click this and click what writes to this address, right? Find out what writes to this address or just F6. You're going to want to click next and this brings up a window that basically tells you every single instruction that writes to this value and a bunch more information about it that you're going to see. So if you click change value, we get this instruction, mov rax edx, right? Now, if we click that, we can see that edx has a value of a 1da and this is 474 in hex. What this means is basically take the value of edx, right? and store it in the address pointed to by RAX. Now, you don't exactly need to know what this means because it's explained later on throughout the GHB. So what it wants us to do is that it wants us to replace this code with code that does nothing. And Chit Engine makes it super simple. So all you have to do is you have to right click this and click replace with code that does nothing or no op. Click OK. And this basically changes this mob instruction to a bunch of no ops, right? These instructions tell the CPU to, hey, do nothing. Right, and that's basically it. Now, if we go onto the game's window and click change value, we can see that it doesn't change no matter how many times you click it, right? And we can click next, and we're on to the next step. Now, before we move on, I wanna show you something cool that Cheat Engine does. So when you're looking at a game and going back and forth and testing your changes, you might have a lot of changes to keep track of, right? And so let's say I change this move instruction back to no ops and close out of this window and close out of this window as well. How am I gonna access it again? Well, we can go to advanced options and it actually shows you that code that you've changed. Cheat Engine keeps track of every single change that you've made to the code of the game and saves it to your cheat table. And that basically makes it so that you don't have to keep track of these changes manually, right? And if you double click this again, this brings up that same window and you can change your code back to its original or knock it out again. And yeah, 
that's it. So now that we're into pointers, I want you to understand what pointers really are. So a pointer is really just another address. So in this code, you can see that I've defined a new variable called health and I'm getting a pointer to it by doing int pointer health pointer one and address of health. What you need to understand is that every single variable you define has a certain address. So if I print the value of health, I'm gonna get 1337. But if I print the health address, I'm gonna get the address right here, right? And if I print the value of health pointer one, I should get the address of health, right? And if I don't control F, you can see that I do. But if I print the address of health pointer one, I'm gonna get a completely new address, which is this one. And if I dereference health pointer one, I'm gonna get 1337 as expected. And as we know, Cheat Engine allows us to look for variables, right? So we can look for this variable, but we can also look for this variable. And this is exactly what we're going to do in this step. So let's go back and start looking for this value. So I'm gonna do 100, first scan, change value, 78, Next scan and over to this value. So what we can do is that we can right click this entry and do what writes to this address. And then if we do change of value, you're gonna get move bracket RDX EAX, right? This means get the value of EAX and put it into the point at value by RDX. And so if you scroll down, we can see that the value of RDX is 15, three, whatever, right? So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna do a new scan, this time for hex. First scan, and I'm gonna get this address. And this is a green address, that means it's static. That means it won't change when you restart the program. So I'm gonna take this address, and I'm gonna do add address manually, pointer, put it here, and there is no offset because we didn't see one, and click OK. So 785, and if I do change pointer, you can see that this value changes, but this value doesn't change. So this is now a dead value, right? And it wants us to change this to 5,000, right? So we can do change pointer again, 5,000. And we can do the next one. So in this section, what it wants us to do is that it wants us to modify the code such that when you do hit me, you actually increment the health by two, right? Now, how can we do this? So first of all, we need to look for this variable, right? So let's do first scan, click off hex, 99, hit me, 98. And it's this one, right? And we can do what writes to this address, click hit me, and this instruction pops up. So what we can do is that we can redirect the control flow of this application to our code. Now, how can we do this? We can go to tools, auto assemble, and we can do a template code injection. And this will let you execute any instruction that you want in assembly. So instead of subtracting, we want to add two. Right, so we're gonna do this and I'm gonna change this to add. And instead of subtract, I'm gonna do two. So subtract one, I'm gonna do add two, right? And click execute, yes, yes. And if you click hit me, you can see that it increases by one. Now, an important thing to realize here is that Cheat Engine not only executes your new code, but it also executes the old code, right? So we add two, but then immediately subtract one. So instead of just adding two, let's add three. Execute again, yes, yes, and hit me. And you can see that it increments twice, right? Or goes up by two. And now we can move on to the next section. So all a multi-level pointer really is, is that it's just a pointer that points to another pointer. Everything we've said so far applies. It still has an address and it still has a value. And in this case, we essentially have a chain of pointers. Specifically, we have a level four pointer. That means there are four different levels that we need to resolve. And to do this, I'm gonna use something that Ray came up with years ago, and this will make it super easy. So basically, we start at the very top of the pointer chain, and we resolve from all the way up to all the way down until we find a static base address, an address that doesn't change, right? So the first thing we're gonna do is obviously look for this variable, right? So 2655, what to do is I'm going to and compare, it immediately. and now we can actually take this address and paste it right here, right? And this address is gonna be at the very end of the next line, right, of the next chain. Now, this address is a result of another address being added to an offset. What offsets are is explained later on in the video, so for now, you don't need to worry about them. So how do you figure out the offset and the address? Well, we can go back and do find what access is, and we can do change value, and we get two instructions. Using the first one, let's see, so it's R side plus 18, so this 18 is your offset. So we can actually go down here and take the value of RSI, and that'll be our address, and 18 is gonna be our offset. Now, we want to find a variable that has this address as its value, right? So we're gonna take this, new scan, hex, 
paste it in there first scan and this gives us the base pointer so we're going to take its address and paste it right here you can also go ahead and paste it right here and now we want to figure out the offset and the address that add up to this address so same thing we're going to do find what access is change value and we can see that this time there is no plus something in the brackets right and this means that there is no offsets or rather the offset is zero right so the offset is zero and the value of rsi is going to be this right so paste it in here and now we can go back and look for this right so new scan case, mini games. first scan we get this take this address Paste it as a base pointer, same for the address, and essentially close out of these windows. Now we can do find what access is, change value, and we get RSI plus 18. So let's see what RSI is. RSI is right here, right? Yep. I can actually take it. RSI, paste it in here, and the offset is 18. So now we're going to look for this. I'm going to do new scan, paste first scan and we get this. So this is the base address, paste it here and here. And now we want to figure out the address and the offset that add up to this address, right? So I'm gonna do find what access is and I'm gonna do change value and we get two instructions. I'm gonna use the first one and RSI from here is this and the offset is 10. And now if we look for this value, we should hopefully find a static green address and we do, right? So now we can take this and paste it here. And what this means is that it basically is the module base address plus some value, and that gives us this pointer. And then we add another offset to it, which, which gives us this one. And then if we dereference it, we get this one. And then if we add to it, we get this one, and then so on and so forth, right? So now what we can do is that we can translate this to a cheat engine entry, right? So we can go to add address manually. Let me resize this a bit so it's easier to see pointer and add our offset so we have one two three and four so we can do 18 let's see actually 10 10 18 0 and 18 and don't forget the base address which is this one paste it here and 155 5 1555 5, 5, right so okay and if you do change value these will both change now let's do change pointer that changed, but now it's zero. This also changed, right? And, and if you do change value, this old one doesn't change anymore, right? And I think what it wants us to do is that it wants us to change it to 5,000, right? Yeah, so let's do this. This is 5,000, change pointer, switch back, and that's it, right? And we can move on to the next step. So in this step, we're gonna put everything we've learned so far to use, right? Essentially, what we want to do is that we want to make sure that these two players never die, but these two players die. But if we do autoplay, we can say that they always die, right? That's because they have the value 100 as their health, while Hal and Kit have the value 500 as their health, right? So it might occur to you that, okay, what if we just knock out the instruction that changes this value, right? And you wouldn't be wrong to think that. Except that in most games, there is a single function that handles the decrementation of health for every single entity. Now, what that means is that if you knock out that instruction, you end up giving everyone invincibility because that function handles every single health value in the game, right? So we need a way of basically differentiating between teams, right? So basically, if the entity is on this team, it doesn't take damage, but if it's on this theme, it does. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is obviously look for these variables, right? So I'm gonna do 100, first scan, attack, so that's Dave. And attack, 96, that is Eric. And let's see, 500. First scan, attack, 49. And let's rename this to how to kit. Let's see, 499, yeah, hit. And yeah, just make sure you put the value type on float because it actually tells you that health in this case is a float. So now let's actually figure out what writes to this address, right? So what writes to this address? Let's see, attack and move SS whatever. So keep that in mind. And now let's do Eric, what writes to this address? And so we can see the same instruction writing to both of them, right? So we can just knock it out. And if we do hal right and if we do attack it's the same exact instruction so what can we do so 
But games are usually programmed using structs, right? So an entity is typically a struct consisting of health, a name, ammo, armor, and so on and so forth, right? So let's see what this base address is. So RBX plus eight, right? So plus eight is probably the health address. So RBX, if I take this and go to memory view, tools and basic data structures, and paste it here and do define new structure and call this entity, we can see a whole bunch of things, right? So we can see a float 497, and if you go back here, that's 497 too, right? So we can rename this to health. And that's really what offsets are. An offset is just a way for the CPU to index into a data structure, such as an array or a struct, right? And this is essentially what it is, right? This is a struct. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna input every single base address into this, into different groups, right? So take the value of Dave, sorry, take the address of Dave, put it here and decrement eight, so zero, to add extra address here, Eric, take it zero, and do new group, that's fine. Hal, take this address, put it here, zero, and new address or extra address, take this, put it here, zero. So let's look around and see what we can find. So this is the health and it's consistent with this. So 94, 94, 497, 499, 494, 497, 499. Yep. And let's see, this doesn't look like anything to me. Neither does this. This seems interesting. Okay, so these two, meaning Eric and Dave, have one as their offset 14, right? And Hal and Kit have two as their offset 14, right? This is probably some team variable. You can probably use this to figure out what team the current entity is on. So let's go back and see what's responsible for modifying this health value, right? So Dave, find what writes, go here, attack, and we get this. So show this assembler. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna redirect the flow of the program to our code. How can we do that? So again, tools, auto assemble, template, code injection, and that's it. So what we wanna do is that we want to compare offset 14 of this structure to one, and if it is, we want to jump to exit. In other words, we want to skip this instruction, right? So basically what we want to do is that we want to compare the offset 14 of this structure to one, and if it is, we want to exit. In other words, we, want to, we don't want to execute this original code, right? So let's code this up. Comparison, RBX plus 14, comparison to one. And if they are equal, we want to jump to the exit, right? And I'm gonna show you why and how this works. So I'm gonna do execute and I'm gonna do jump. I'm gonna set a breakpoint on here and we're gonna trace this program, right? So I'm gonna do attack and let's see. So RBX plus 14, RBX is 2938, 2938, right? And in comparison, let's see, are they equal? and they are equal, so we jump to this address, right? Notice that we skipped this original instruction, right? This was in the original code and we skipped it, right? Now, if we do step into, we are back in the actual flow of the program, right? And this is our jump, right? This is what Cheat Engine put for us in the code, right? And if we do run, we can see that we didn't actually end up decreasing the health of Dave, right? If we do it again, run, it doesn't decrease the health of Dave, right? Same for Eric, but if we do Hal, we can see that they do decrease, right? So if I do restart game and restart autoplay, and they die, right? Simple. So this concludes this video, and in the next one, I'm gonna walk you through the mini games.